everyone. In the next couple videos, we're going to be going over the American Civil War. In these videos, we're going to be discussing the battles, the key strategies, the advantages and disadvantages, the people, everything that has to do with the American Civil War. And we might even get a little bit about the actual results of the war before we go into Reconstruction. The Union clearly had more advantages than the Confederacy. The Union had more people, factories to power the war effort, and an extensive railroad system that the South lacked. The South, however, did have two main advantages, better generals and a highly motivated military. Perhaps the North's biggest disadvantage was that they actually had to win the war by conquering the South. So came the North's main strategy, the Anaconda Plan, which was also known as Scott's Great Snake. The Anaconda plan, Anaconda plan was a blockade of southern ports. If the South could not export their cotton, then they couldn't make much money. Additionally, they relied on imports for weapons, food, and other supplies. Part of this plan included taking over the Mississippi River and effectively cutting the Confederacy in half. Then, like an Anaconda, the Union would be able to squeeze the Confederacy into submission. Additionally, Union strategies included eventually in the war, suspending habeas corpus, allowing for the imprisonment of a person without charging them. And also, both sides utilized something called conscription, which was forced military service, also known as drafting people into their service. In contrast to the North, the South simply needed to fight a defensive war. And with the occasional attack on, on Northern forces, the South did utilize a defensive strategy prevent the, an easy Northern victory to cause the public to lose interest. That was a big goal there. If the South could continue the war, the Northern public would lose interest in the war and encourage their politicians to seek peace and let the South go. And finally, the South really depended, was hoping to depend on foreign aid. If they could get the British and the French to assist them, then the South could quite possibly um, work their way to a victory and officially independence. The first major battle in the Civil War was the Battle of Bull Run. It was held in July of 1861. The Northern Army marched on Richmond, Virginia, which was the Confederate capital, and faced the Confederate Army at Bull Run Creek. With the leadership of General Stonewall Jackson, the Confederacy pretty easily won this battle. Fun fact about this battle, the people in Washington, D.C. actually came out to watch the battle and picnicked near the battlefield. They wanted to watch the battle take place. As the Union Army retreated, the people watching the battle also had to flee because the armies were advancing towards them. As a result, they congested the bridges and roads the Union Army needed to exit the battle. So there were no more people watching the battles after this. Also, some Confederate troops thought this battle actually ended the war and decided after the battle to go home. The Union defeat actually led Lincoln to appoint George C. McClellan as the head of the Union forces near Washington, D.C. This would be after General Winfield Scott had actually retired and there was a temporary replacement for him in place. The next major battle, though not necessarily the next battle, was the Battle of Antietam. Here, General Robert E. Lee had taken command of the Confederate forces in the eastern part of the, uh, of the war and had been quite successful repealing McClellan's army away from Richmond, Virginia, keeping the Union from taking the Confederate capital. He was so successful that the southern armies were just basically pushing the north further and further towards D.C., winning victory after victory. The southern advance, however, stopped at Antietam, which is in Maryland. This was the bloodiest single day of the American Civil War with about 26,000 casualties. Now, casualties are not deaths. It's a combination of injuries and deaths. The result of the Battle of Antietam was really, it was a draw. However, the Union claimed victory here because really it was basically the first time that the Union Army, and by the Union Army here, I mean the Army of the Potomac, did not lose. So for them, it kind of was a victory. And so as Lee withdrew from the battlefield, McClellan failed to pursue him. The North did have the slight advantage here at the end of this battle, but McClellan decided not to pursue Lee's army and make an attempt to end the war then and there. So result, as a result of this, Lincoln got frustrated with McClellan and removed him as the head of the Union armies. The South was hoping for British assistance during the war due to British dependence on Southern cotton. 
However, hope for British support ended with Lincoln's issuance of the Emancipation Proclamation. The Emancipation Proclamation was issued on September 22, 1862. Lincoln actually waited until after the Battle of Antietam so that the proclamation did not come across as desperate. Remember, the Union had not been really winning any battles up to this point, so it needed a victory for Lincoln to hang his hat on before he could actually issue the Emancipation Proclamation. The Emancipation Proclamation freed slaves in the rebelling states. No slaves in Union territories were freed in order to prevent the border states from seceding and joining with the Confederacy. So in effect, this did not actually free any slaves because the rebelling slaves did not recognize the United States government as having any authority over them. It did, however, make the war about slavery for the North and as a result succeeded in its main goal, which was to prevent Britain and France from helping the South. The two European powers had considered assisting the South due to economic interests. However, both had already abolished slavery and supporting a pro-slavery side over a side appearing to favor ending the practice was not politically feasible for Britain or France. Additionally, the Emancipation Proclamation encouraged slaves to run away to the North and it paved the way to, for them to begin fighting for the Union. Up through 1863, the South had really been winning victory after victory with very few Northern victories breaking up the Confederate run of momentum. However, that ended in a four-day period in July of 1863, beginning with the Battle of Gettysburg. General Lee pushed his armies north in an attempt to take the war to the northern people, encouraging them to get their um, government to seek peace with the south, and also potentially to put his troops in a position to take Washington, D.C. So Lee marched his troops into Gettysburg, Pennsylvania on July 1st, 1863, when the fighting began. The three-day battle encompassed some of the most intense fighting of the war, including the well-known Pickett's Charge. At Gettysburg, more than 50,000 troops were injured or killed in the battle, making it the bloodiest battle in United States history. The result of the Battle of Gettysburg was a, a resounding Confederate defeat. And as a result, the South never advanced north again, instead being pushed deeper and deeper into Virginia. One result of the Battle of Gettysburg came in November of 1863. For the first time, the United States government created a military federal cemetery. In November of 1863, the cemetery was dedicated in Gettysburg specifically for the Union troops who had died in battle. At the ceremony, President Lincoln gave a two-minute speech that helped to reinvigorate the Union and highlighted just why the North was fighting. That government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth. The other major battle that took place during the same weekend as the Battle of Gettysburg was the Battle of Vicksburg. This took place in Mississippi. This was a siege, actually, that was multiple months long that ended on July 4th, 1863, just the day after the Battle of Gettysburg ended. Here, General Ulysses S. Grant achieved victory in the West and as a result, the North took over the Mississippi River Valley and succeeded in cutting the South's access to the Mississippi River, therefore completing General Winfield Scott's Great Snake. In 1864, as a result of his successes at Vicksburg and in the Western Confederacy, Ulysses S. Grant was appointed the head of the Army of the Potomac and as the main general to take on General Robert E. Lee. Grant put forth a policy of aggressively attacking Lee. Grant's strategy of continually engaging Lee and continually oppressing the attack resulted in nearly double the amount of casualties for the Union at this time than for the Confederacy. However, with the large population and army size, the North could take the hit. Elsewhere, Grant promoted a policy of total war, taking the battle directly to the Southern people. This was best exemplified by General William T. Sherman's march to the sea. Sherman marched his Union forces into Atlanta and burned the city to the ground. From there, he marched the Union forces from Atlanta across Georgia to Savannah, destroying all in their path. By early 1865, it was clear that Grant's tactics had worn down the Confederacy. On April 9, 1865, at Appomattox Courthouse in Virginia, General Lee surrendered to Grant, virtually ending the American Civil War. 
Less than a week after General Lee's surrender, Abraham Lincoln was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth. There were numerous consequences of the Civil War. First, approximately 600,000 American lives were lost in battle. More Americans died in the Civil War than died in all other wars the United States has participated in combined. Additionally, the war strengthened the federal government and weakened the power of individual states. The stronger federal government paved the way for America to grow into a world power. Finally, the Union victory meant an end to slavery. Although the Emancipation Proclamation had no direct effect on freeing slaves during the war, it ended slavery in the rebelling states as they surrendered. By the end of 1865, slavery had been completely abolished throughout the Union. Now the only question left was how to put the country back together.